Hello and welcome. We're on the ironing board today. I've not used the ironing board for a good while. So here I've got a Bush uh, AU31D. I think that's the model number. Now this is like a, a record player amplifier. So in the early 60s when stereo was first uh, coming into fashion, um, people bought these um, as an extension, uh, they'd have a stereo cartridge in a record player um, but this was an added extra and you what you did you plugged it in and then that gave you stereo they're quite rare these, I actually bought the record player um, and this together I'm going to restore the record player and get that uh, fully working but I want to turn this into a guitar amp, into a little just uh, office desk guitar amp type thing Something that just sits sits on my desk and I can just plug into every now and again. It's an interesting bit of kit this. I have wanted one of these for a while, as I said. Um, so we're going to have a look at it um, and then see about some ideas of how we're going to turn this into a spiffing guitar amplifier. So let's have a look at the back. So there we go and you can see the model, model number there. Um, AU31D amplifying unit. Now there were two versions of these, although they looked exactly the same, uh, but the tubes were different. One had ECL83s in, and then the other one had ECL86s. I think this is an ECL86 one, which is good, because that means it's got a bit more output. So basically an ECL valve is an output valve um, with a triode. So basically here we've got, this is in push-pull, and we've got two triodes, and I think one triode is a cathodyne, I'm guessing that, and there is a schematic for this uh, contraption. So let's have this back off and have a look inside. So here we are looking inside, and uh, you can see we've got a Celestian speaker there, three ohms in this one. And, as I said, these are in push-pull. Um, uh, I'm sure they are, because I can remember off the schematics. We've got two two tubes here, and they are um, ECL86s. I don't know what the code for those would be in America. I'd have to, I did used to know, and I forgot. So we're looking in there. You can see we've got the mains transformer there. We just zoom in. And the output transformer is fastened onto the speaker. I've also got a chassis for one of these, uh, one of the record players as well, which I think is the same chassis as in here. They always have this elliptical speaker, this Celestian elliptical speaker, and that um, and that tweeter thing going on there, that flat. Um, and I forget who makes those now, but. Uh, they're generally blown. If we look in the top here, you can see we've got a Plessy capacitor, and there is a date on that, but it says Feb. But I'm guessing that'll be about 60, 61, maybe 62. But we'll have, we'll be removing that anyway. And if we look down there, there's some kind of rectifier, which I think is half wave on this. So we may have to look at that. Got some capacitors there. I think they might be pluses, and they look a bit sick, don't they? We've got some uh, uh, ceramics there. So yeah, interesting little item. Now normally I remove these speakers, and I've got uh, I, some three-inch speakers that I use called Visitron, the German, and they sound absolutely great. I've put those in the record player amps, and you can see the videos for those. There's a 5C1 uh, champ that I converted, a record player that I converted into a 5C1 champ, and I use those speakers uh, for that project. And I've used them in, I've done two or three of those, and I've used those same speakers, and they're very good. So I'm going to power this up now because um, I have powered it up before when I first got it. So I know there's no issues, so I don't particularly need the Variac. So I'm going to turn it back that way. And I've just plugged it in earlier, and we're going to switch it on, turn it up. So first of all, let's just 
turn it on its face and have a close look at these tubes now I can see the heaters in one but I don't see the heaters in the other Wow, we've got some frying. Yeah. But I've got a feeling that this tube is not... Ah, well maybe I'm wrong then. I don't see any heaters in that. Oh, I do now, yes. And I think... Yeah, so we've got... Oh, now we've got a bit of input. So we didn't have that before when I first turned it on. And that, so that obviously wants, it must have uh, a touch of the old dirty socket syndrome. Now we're not gonna have a massive amount of gain out of this, this amplifier because we've only got one gain stage and the, uh, uh, and the cathodyne. So what I'm wondering, if there's room on that chassis to stick another valve socket somewhere. And that means, having a look, uh, maybe, we'd have to get the whole thing out and have a look at that. Maybe get one in at the side of these two. And then we'd have a couple of triodes and a cathodyne. And then we really could get some nice uh, gain out of it and we don't want this to be distorting and turning it into an heavy metal amp or anything but right let's just turn it over pilot light keeps coming in and out we've got no hum on it see if These knobs t seem to turn forever. Very strange. The EQ doesn't seem to be working. Hmm. An interesting beast. I just think these look dead retro. And I've just be great just to turn one into a guitar amplifier. Just to have on your desk. It's excellent. So you can see, if we have a look at these controls, and you see what, where, what I'm actually doing there. So if we look, if we zoom into the tr uh, the treble there, and see how you turn these. Like that, they don't seem to be making a lot of difference. If you listen to the, the noise, the hissing doesn't change. But there's no surprise really, given its age. There's the volume, which the on-off switch is there. You can see that there. So there we go. That's what we're going to do with that. Now, yeah, the other thing we have to be a bit careful of with these is this faceplate is made of metal. And if we don't get that nice and tight, it will be rattling quite badly. But it's in, re it's in reasonably good condition, this. In fact, given its age, it's probably in exceptional condition. There you go, check those out. A pair of yellow print Mullard ECL86s. So, as long as they test good on the uh, tube meter, they're excellent. So that's nice. This, this is all original, and that's good. Now, if we, if we can just get inside there and... I'll try and turn the light so I can get some light in there. And you can just see the two sockets there. Actually, I'll probably just keep zoom out. You can see one of them. And let me just hone that round and get the light in. Probably can't. It's a bit awkward because I've only got a bulb light. But you can see the two sockets there. And if we look across, there's the transformer and the other side might be able to see um, there's a bit of space there there we go look and I think if we could get a, so a valve socket fitted in there now if we look underneath that we've got the capacitor there but given that this won't have a deal of HT voltage on it and that thing's huge and we all know capacitors aren't that big nowadays I think we can put some smaller caps in this that's a 50-50 I can't see what voltage rating it is, 
but it won't be a lot and I think we can put some smaller caps in and clear that space underneath and wire in another valve socket and that will give us um, I mean we if we put a, you know a 12x7 or something in there we only need to use one stage we don't need to use both of them and I can tell you that from memory that on these ECL 86s the triode um, is a hundred mu on those I'm almost sure it is something in the back of my mind thinks it is those triodes are the, are the same as an ECC 83 in gain so we only really need one more gain stage we don't need three um, otherwise this thing as soon as you start to turn it up will be overdriving like crazy um, which if you're only into heavy metal that's great but if really I don't really want to bend just a, a, a desk amplifier that distorts massively when I, as soon as I turn it up so yes I'd like to slide that Plessy capacitor out and see what that date is on there to give us a more accurate date but this uh, this has got promise now it won't be the you know the best sounding thing in the world but it should sound reasonable right i couldn't resist plugging it in just getting a guitar in it so i've connected a connected up to that uh, uh aerial socket at the back why you normally see those you see those at the back of televisions but that's the input socket so i thought we'd give it a go so we've got the strap through it it's flat out sound too bad to say it's not even supposed to be a guitar amplifier but there's room for improvement so let's try something with humbuckers right so we've got some humbuckers going on there overdrive now with the humbuckers pushing it I mean uh, you know there'll be a lot of things wrong with this amplifier the um, bypass capacitors will be probably leaking on the cathodes the uh, preamp stages um, they may they may or may not be a, um, a cathode uh, bypass capacitor on the output stages um, and that that could probably be leaking as well so all these little things we lose gain and uh, it's a matter of obviously going through all of those, sorting it out. We're probably lacking a bit of HT voltage as well. We could modify the, the power supply to get a bit more HT and obviously changing that speaker um, to something a bit more, will give us a bit more volume. It'd actually be nice if we could get a couple of speakers in there, but... Um, there's there is room on the panel it's just that on this side i think it is the uh or this one side um where that t tweeter is that's where the output tubes are and uh, i think they will be obstructing um another speaker so i don't think we'll get one in not at a glance i guess that anyway and even if it does it'll be tight
if you listen to that bottom end. There's a definite sign of, of uh, very leaky capacitors all round. But I think that'll sound pretty good, you know, when we get all those, uh, all get all restored, get rid of all those faults that we, we can obviously hear there. That sounds most delightful, not. But yeah, there's a lot of potential. It'd be a fun project. It'd be a cool thing to have on, to have on my desk. Actually, when it's all when it's all service, we may get away with that having uh, without having another another gain stage. Just turn the volume down a bit. Yeah. See if the EQ works. That's the treble down, fully down. Let's see. Yeah, that seems to. That works as to a fashion. See if the bass works. Yeah. So the EQ works. So it all basically works. It just sounds a bit sick because it's in need of some capacitors and things. So, yeah, so there we go. We can uh, do a few mods on it as well. I'm sure we can squeeze a bit more gain out of it here and there. The the single, obviously, there'll, there'll be a one stage um, preamp uh, triode, in which will be in one of those ECL86s, um, and I'm sure we can increase the gain on that. So we might get away just with one gain stage on there. After all, we don't want it to be loud. <laughs> It's just something to plug into on the desk and you know just have a bit of a, a bit of a warm up or something or just just a bit of a bit of a blast. So I'm gonna leave this one there. We've had a had a good look at that and I, I usually do these bits of projects while I'm waiting for parts uh, for, for other amplifiers that, that I'm you know that, that I'm working on. So I've got three amplifiers in at the moment and we'll be seeing those on the channel. So we've got a solid state Marshall and a, a, a crate club 50 which i've got in for repair and then i've got uh, an orange reverb which is actually a reverb unit which is about the size of, of one of their amplifiers we've got that in and we're going to that's a restoration project so i've ordered parts uh, for two of those amplifiers and uh, we should be looking at those and then once i've got those out of the way probably just going to stick this on bench it shouldn't take too long to do it I'm waiting for some parts for the old uh, for the old amplifier that we put the television valves in that full build. There's some more bits coming for that. I've got some knobs coming for it and stuff, and they'll be a while coming because I've ordered them straight from China. And we've got a few mods to do on that to get that to up to where we want it. Uh, I've had quite a few comments on that uh, on that project as well, so I should be um, be going through some of those. Um, in part two of course questions people have asked me and things and I may even do a video on I've got loads of those valves so I may do a video on those uh, most of the valves what I call P valves this will start with the letter P PL84, PCF86 and so on so I've got a stack of those um, and I'm, I might just do a video on those so we can go through some of these tubes um, and just see how useful they are, which ones are useful and which ones are not useful. So I'm going to leave this one there. Thanks for watching and uh, you all take care. I'll see you all in the next video and that shouldn't be too long. So bye bye for now.